Okay, this is the M1 paper from October 2021. It's question number three. And as you can see by looking at it, this is a kinematics question. We're going to be using constant acceleration and SUVAT here to solve it. It's quite unusual in that we have this initial scenario here, but then we have one, two, three different models that we're going to apply to it. So sort of three questions in one, really. Uh, what that is going to mean is that first of all, we need to get ourselves organized with what we, information we know and then be really clear with the way that we display our answer. So what do we know? We know that uh, this thing is going to be starting off at 25 meters per second. It goes from A to a road sign. That's 48 meters um, that it travels in total. And then we're going to have different things. So in the first model, um, it decelerates uniformly. A is just, uh, the acceleration is just equal to minus six. In the second model, we're gonna have a different situation and in the third model, a different situation again. But let's just focus on doing mainly the first part and then we'll look at parts B and part C. So as I said to you, don't know whether you necessarily need this diagram each time, but I just wanna make it clear to myself almost. Right, what have we got going on? Well, we've got this uh, car going from point A to a road sign. And in this particular one, for the first model, it starts off with a speed of 25. I know that the distance it's gonna travel all in one go is 48 and t equals naught at this time here. Yeah, that's probably enough for me to be able to start with my SUVAT. When I'm doing SUVAT, I will say the same thing about SUVAT questions. What I'm hoping to have, unless it's a complicated version, is that there'll be four of the variables that I'm being involved in this question, and I'll have three of them and be looking for the fourth one. Let's see if that's what I've got this time. We know it travels a distance 48 meters. It started off with a speed of 25, and we're actually interested in knowing what the speed is there. So V is what I'm looking for. They've told me it's a decelerating all the way through there with a deceleration of minus six. T is not involved. So yeah, this is my classic one that I'm looking for. Got three, looking for a fourth one. What variables am I using? S, U, V, and A. Well, I'm hoping you've done enough work that you just immediately recognize that as being V squared equals U squared plus two AS. Just a matter of sticking everything in now and hopefully it will work out nicely for us. So I've got 25 squared, two lots of, be careful here, minus six times 48, so V squared, if you calculate all of that, works out to be 49, you think, oh, right, great. If V squared works out to be 49, that's not an accident then, is it, that V just works out to be equal to seven meters per second. Okay, I'm happy with that first part, the, the first model that we've done. Right, it then says for the second model, well, for all of them, um, speed limit's 13, so it won't go below 13, um, so the speed limit's 13, um, afterwards is 13. So when it gets down to 13, it's, gonna, it's just a way of them making up that what's going to happen for, um, the second model is it's going to decelerate. So it's going to decelerate till it gets to 13 meters per second. And then it's going to carry on at 13 meters per second for the rest of the journey. So again, if I draw my diagram out here. What I've got to consider then, you don't need this diagram and say this is really more helping me as I'm going through and doing it, that what's going to happen is I'm going to get to some point there and then for the second part from X to the road sign, we're going to give a constant acceleration after it has um, decelerated, first of all, okay? So it's going to decelerate from A to X we're gonna have u is equal to 25. We're gonna have a equals minus six here. And I'm gonna have v equals 13. So I can work out this part of the journey and I'll, I'll explain that to the examiner in a minute. And then for the remainder of the journey, once I know what's gone on for that first part, that's gonna travel, but at 13. I know that we travel at 13, it will just be a constant thing there. So. Hopefully this will explain it to you as well as to the examiner here. 
for a x for that part of the journey for this first part here what i'm going to have is s u v a and t again as per normal s is not 48 now 48 is all of that length there and i'm going from here to an unknown bit there i don't know what s is in fact i'm not particularly interested in what s is in this one i'm gonna put a dash for that i know it starts off at 25 though and i know it's only gonna stop decelerating when it's 13 and i know the deceleration is minus six so what that means is i can work out that time there i can work out the time it takes to decelerate from 25 down to 13. so let's go ahead and do that first of all we've got v u a and t so that's v equals u plus a t so that's going to give me 13 is equal to 25 minus 6 t 6 t works out to be equal to 12 so i can just squeeze it in here t is going to work out to be equal to two seconds so what i now know is it takes two seconds to do that bit there so let's actually say here now which is like it's quite helpful for me to work out what the um from the diagram what's going on there right i need to know how far that's gone so now i'll do suva again but because i've got these four now i'm just going to write it out again i don't necessarily say that you'd write it out again you could just do it straight away but if we did suva again i've worked out the time it took to do that i'm now going to work out the distance so now s is what i'm interested in this is still 25 this is still 13 this is still minus six and this time i've got that one this is more just for you know people who struggle with um, these kinematic type questions to use the same approach each time got three and i'm looking for the fourth one so v u a and s is v squared equals u squared plus two a s but what this means now is we'll be able to work out how far it went when it was doing um, scenario number two so 13 squared is 25 squared plus two lots of minus six lots of s tidy this all up so let's not rush it even though you, you sort of want to want to just get on with the next bit uh, minus 12 s there so s is going to work out to be i'll let you rearrange all that s works out to be 38 meters so now let's just think about what we've managed to work out that from A to X, I now know that that is 38 meters and it took two seconds. So I now know I've got 10 meters left where I'm traveling at um, a speed of 13. So what I can now do is say, what we're trying to work out, we're trying to work out um, the time at which it reaches the sign this time. So I've got two seconds for the 10 meters that's left, and I'm going to call that from X to the road sign. And again, I'm just going to go really long winded through this and do SUVAT, but you could just, there is no acceleration, is there? In this last part, it's a constant speed here. So you can just do um, S equals UT here, but just to say what we've got going on, I know that it's going to travel 10 meters and I know it's going to be going at 13 meters per second. Okay, and I'm trying to work out what T is there. With these two, I'm not interested because it, well, A is equal to zero. So, so it doesn't matter about the other ones here, but I just get S equals UT. So 10 is equal to 13 times T. Distance equals speed times time, okay? So time works out to be, we'll leave it as a fraction at the moment, 10 over 13. But that means that the total time then for this second one is the two seconds that I had from the first part plus the 10 over 13. So two and 10 over 13, but I'm probably going to write it as a decimal. It's 2.8 seconds. Let's go back and check. Did they say anything about decimal places or significant figures? No, they didn't. So it's okay. To leave it like that it's a long question this one so let's now look at the last part so now in the third model the car is assumed to move 
with 25 meters per second from A until T equals 0.2 seconds, and then it will decelerate until it reaches a speed of 13, and it maintains that speed until it reaches the road sign. Again, find the value of T for which that happens. So another complicated part to it. What we're doing is we're saying for this uh, third part, for part C then, that it's gonna do A, B, C, and then the road sign. We know that that total is going to be 48 meters. We know that to start off with, from A to B, it's just gonna be, I'm not gonna take too long over this, otherwise the video will be absolutely ages. It's just gonna be S equals UT. Okay, there's no acceleration there. So S is just gonna be 25 times the 0.2 seconds means we know it goes five meters to start off with. Then from B to C, I'll do a proper SUVAT for this one. And what have we got going on with this one? Well, the speed didn't change, so that's 25. We know that that's going down to 13. We know that that's minus six. So that's exactly the same as we did before. So from this information, I'm not gonna redo the work. It's only worth four marks. So I'm gonna say it takes two seconds to do this and it travels 38 meters. They do not want you to redo that. They want you to understand that. Look at that and go, oh, that, that's the same bit there now. So what that may, now means is that I've now got that that's 38 meters here. So the last little bit, we now know it's gonna be traveling five meters again. From the fact this plus this plus this must work out to be equal to 48. So from C to the road sign, It's a constant speed again, so I'm not, I'm not gonna spend ages doing this. This might be the last bit of the page anyway here. S is gonna be equal to UT. I know that it travels five meters. It's going at 13 meters per second. So let's work out what T is. T will be five over 13 this time. So the total time for this one, convoluted journey, would be 0.2 let's do it here, 0 0.2 seconds there, it's gonna be two seconds there, and it's gonna be five over 13 seconds there. So it's just all of those added together. And then whatever that works out to be, apparently that works out to be 2.6 seconds, but wow, yeah. Long, complicated question there. If that came up in the exam, you wouldn't be very happy, would you? And just thinking, wow. But for us, seeing it as a past paper question just shows you the sorts of things that they can ask us. And just, just don't give up on it. Go through and do, you know, about halfway through that, I was thinking, I just want to move on to the next question. But you've got to show a little bit of fortitude with this sort of thing. And really, hopefully, don't do everything I've done there, but that, you know, I'm explaining it to you guys as well as trying to explain it to the examiner. But some of the little steps I've done here just mean that people are able to follow it. And if you're able to follow it on a video, then hopefully the examiner will be able to follow it if it was your work. Right, tough on that. Hopefully that makes sense to you.